What is up guys, welcome back to another SP Vids video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my tape deck, which I recently got working again, super happy. I don't think I've ever had this working in a recording capacity. I think I've been able to play tapes, but I've never been able to record with it. So saw a few people on Instagram recently recording into tape and I thought I'll sit down with mine and see if I can actually get it working. So took the lid off, had a little fiddle around and I've actually managed to get it recording beats, but there's a lot of stuff that I have to do in order to get this to work so it's a bit tricky and I'm going to try and show you how I got this working I hope you guys find this interesting so yeah I've been bouncing beats onto tape and they sound quite nice actually not as much of a difference as I was expecting I think it's because the tape that they've actually got is actually pretty good quality so I'm not kind of getting that crazy raw tape sound but I am getting a subtle little difference on my beats it kind of mellows out all the frequencies quite a lot so yeah i'm getting a really nice sound out of it can't complain at all it sounds nice and it's also really cool just to have beats going onto tape and listen to them back from tape it's super super fun so yeah i'm going to show you my tape deck how i'm recording onto it and we'll take it from there and uh, yeah we'll talk about it a little bit more as well don't forget that on my store spvids.com there's still 10 percent off all beat packs so if you use lockdown 10 at the checkout that's 10 percent off and that runs to the 5th of december so if you want to grab some of my drums, go over to spvids.com and use that discount code. Members, thank you very much for being members. You get 15% off still until the 5th of December as well. I'll send you that code again via the community tab uh, for the members only. Okay, so let's get into this one. Let me show you around my tape deck. Right guys, so here we are at my tape deck. As you can see, I've powered it on. Now the first issue that I was having with this, which I seem to have resolved somehow, and they're the best kind of problems I find, the ones that just solve themselves. They're the best ones, aren't they? So I was having this problem whenever I'd power up this deck, it would make a, a really loud mechanical noise, like a clunk. And it was very, very like rhythmic as well. So it would happen like every three or four seconds. Just got this huge clunk, nothing would happen. Another clunk, exactly the same. Just kept doing that over and over again. So I couldn't play any tapes at all. Couldn't do anything with the device whatsoever. And what was happening is I'll do a different shot for you guys to see. But if I just reach in here, there's a there's actually a, a dial or a, a wheel with a uh, a driving band on it. And I just push that to the left, and that disengaged whatever it was trying to do and made it actually be usable again to play tapes. So since doing that a few times, it seems to be working again now and it's not doing that anymore. So I was wondering if maybe one of the buttons here at the front got jammed or something like that, which meant it was trying to do a task every time it was turned on and it couldn't do it. So it just kept jamming and jamming. So that seems to have resolved itself, which is very, very handy. And yeah, I've been putting tapes in now. So if I hit play on this now, you won't hear the audio, but you can see that the signal is coming out nice and loud, which has been shown on this really nice LED meter here. So yeah, managed to solve that first issue, which was the first step. That wasn't happening previously. Um, so that was like a new problem that was happening, which I managed to figure out. So that was really good. So that can it can play tapes perfectly at this point. I could listen to tapes. But then moving on to my second issue. So I can play tapes absolutely fine, but then I was trying to record. And what I started off doing was trying to use this. So it's mic in left and right. And then as you can see here, there's a little button here to select the input. So it's in for mic and out for line which is on the back so started trying to record through this and i could hear the signal coming in but it was really really quiet so there seems to be something wrong with that part of the device maybe or maybe you need a powered mic in order to get a signal from this i have had a stereo mic in the past which has like two jack leads coming off it but unfortunately yeah i haven't got that anymore and it wouldn't be useful for the sp anyway so i switched to line in and i was playing loads of stuff through line in and it just wasn't picking up anything at all. Added to that, if we go back to the other side of the device, was the fact that the recording light, when you press this button, as you can see there, it doesn't light up. So that got me thinking, right, there's something, there's a connection here. I wasn't getting any signal over on this bit on the left here, and the light or LED isn't showing on here when I'm trying to press record either. So I started looking into pressing that button and trying to see what sort of mechanisms it was triggering inside the cassette player when that was happening and I noticed something straight away that something had become disconnected so I'm just gonna have to move the camera for this bit so I am having to do this handheld so apologies for any wobbleness in this bit if that's a real word 
So as you can see here, there's a plastic bit on the right hand side. So this metal arm is meant to push that plastic bit to the left like this. As you can see there, it connects and it's meant to push it like this. And what that does, if you can see over here, if you follow that silver line, so that silver cable that runs across goes underneath there and then it connects to this piece of plastic here. So that wasn't connected when I first opened up the device. It was just flailing around inside. So obviously at some point when I've been moving it or when a previous owner has been moving this, that's become disconnected. So if you can see here now, if I push that piece of plastic with my hand, see how it pulls that black bit of plastic out? So that wasn't happening before. And the clue was this here, which says record and the arrow. I saw that on the circuit and thought, okay, that must mean that that needs to move. And the fact that the metal piece isn't in there, that's not good. So I connected it back up and got that working. And unfortunately, it still doesn't actually work. So it's almost as if there isn't enough tension in this part here. So if I'm here and if I press the record button, see how it pushes it across, but that's not enough. So if we go back to the front of the device, the record light isn't actually lit. So if I pull that all the way across with my hand, you can see now I have managed to get the record light to light. So I'm actually having to push it manually in order to get the recording aspect of this to, to function. So when I first figured that out and I couldn't get this, I couldn't actually get this connected for a little bit. I had to do a little bit of jiggery pokery to get that to work. So I was just actually holding this across while, while it was, uh, accepting a signal from the SP. I was holding that in for the entirety of the recording, but obviously that wasn't practical. So eventually managed to get that hooked up again. And yeah, at the moment I am actually having to push this across every time I want to record. So I'm just pushing that across like that. That pulls that out far enough and I'm getting the recording LED on the front. So I think the problem that's happening is there's probably a spring somewhere in this circuit some sort of mechanism inside this bit which isn't working anymore it's probably a spring there is a spring inside that bit so i think that could be the culprit something seized up basically and it means that this isn't moving very freely um so i'm gonna have to have a little look into that and see if there's anything i can do if not i'm just gonna have to run this with the top off and just push that across every time i want to record which is a bit of an inconvenience but for the sake of being able to record onto tape it really doesn't bother me that much to be honest so yeah, I have managed to record some beats onto this tape. I've recorded about six or seven beats. And what I was doing actually, I'm having a bit of a session with the pattern sequencer, which is very, very rare for me. I'm actually really starting to like it quite a lot on the SP. So using the pattern sequencer on the SP, and then I've just been bumping those out to this tape deck. And I have got some results, which I will put on the video now. So I've got a beat where I haven't processed it through the tape, and I've got a beat where I have processed it through the tape. So basically what I mean by processed is I've recorded the beat onto the tape, and then I've recorded from the tape back into my computer and put it into Ableton. And without processing, what I've done is just gone straight from the back of my SP and into my audio interface with no tape whatsoever. So I'll put in a comparison of that now. So yeah, there's a nice there's a nice vibe to it, but uh, there's more to learn about this tape deck, I think, which I can get some better results. So we'll see how that pans out over the next couple of days. So yeah, one word of warning with tape, it is super easy to overwrite your beats by accident. So you have to be really, really careful if you're doing that. What I actually started doing is recording a bounce of the beat into Ableton, just so I had that in case. And then once I'd done that, I was then recording a bounce onto tape as well. So I was backing up to my door 
so you can use any door that you own like logic fl studio even audacity would be enough so yeah was recording them onto there, saving them, and then recording them into tape. And it's a good job I did do that because I'm, I've messed up this tape completely. There's beats overlapping, there's like bits of emptiness where I've recorded silence accidentally. Bits where I've tried to fade in the track manually with the SP dial. I don't know why I always try and do that because you can never get it smooth. It's a lot easier just to record the beat and then do the fades in the audio interface. So yeah, few problems there. And that's a big tip that I'd say is don't record directly onto tape without having some kind of backup of your beat first. So that's the end of this video guys, thanks for tuning in, I hope you found that interesting about my tape deck. I can't wait to put some beats through that and put my next tape out via that. I definitely want to get um, something new on Spotify either towards the end of this year or the start of next year, so stay tuned for that update. Thank you all again for watching, liking, commenting, etc. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button and hit the like as well, it helps me out massively and gets my videos recommended to other people as well. So yeah, final shout out just to my members again, thank you very much for that and to everyone that's been purchasing beat packs through the shop as well it really does mean a lot because it keeps me going doing this so huge thanks to you all for that keep making beats guys if you've got a tape deck at home dig it out and see if you can get it to work because i didn't think i'd be able to and it did so it's always worth having a little snoop around inside to see what you can do see you soon for more content peace <laughs>